Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, we're going to talk about deploying Watchtower. What is Watchtower, do you say? Well, you know what? That's going to be a way to help you automatically update your containers and give you some of your life back. Now, I'm also going to show you a few things to watch out for because I got caught off guard. Now, there really is not any tweaking I've seen to do this with, but I tell you, Watchtower is made a fan of me because I was dreading updating one container and went into some bumps on two different containers. But you know what? I'm going to share this with you and then we'll make this a win-win for everybody. Now, the content that you're watching is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesworthronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. And if for some reason you're not able to click on thumbs up, I understand. If you're going to click on thumbs down, please send me a message and let me know what I could do better because I want this to help you. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about deploying Watchtower using a deployment script. And this is something I just found and you're going to want to write this down. I will have it in the description because this is going to make deploying a lot of things potentially a little bit easier, but at least it's, you know, it's an option to consider. And then we're going to check the log using Portainer and CLI, just so that you know what it should be looking like. So let's switch over to our machine and we've got this ready to go. So you'll go down here to settings and you turn something on called uh, uh, use external templates. Now I've already got this in the uh, buffer. So we'll click on save settings and you notice now there's an app templates feature up here so we'll go up here and you notice there's a whole host of things uh, you can easily find more things to deploy on here than you may have space on your your docker host which you may be getting a new docker host on some of this so you can see this is going to expose you to a whole host uh, of options so let's scroll here all the way down there's they promise over 80 and I counted the other day and it's about was 91, 92, somewhere in there. So here is Watchtower. So we'll double click on that. And all I did in setting this up is deploy container. Now this is going to take just a little bit because it's got to go download and put it in and it now says running. Now, there's no published ports. There is a port that is out there, but I didn't find that it did anything. I have this for it to communicate to the outside world to get any of the new updated templates. Now, let's go here and see what it has gone and done, and we'll go into logs. Okay, at this point, it's scheduling the first run. It hasn't done it yet, and I don't know why it's reporting UTC because I did set my clock. So that's going to be just a few minutes away but this is showing you what is going to be in the log file at this point and i will tell you right now that when this runs don't try to be doing anything with your docker host at least if it's on a raspberry pi because mine got extremely sluggish and it was a while before i realized that docker was actually downloading some things now we've shown you how to look at the logs in gui so let's show over here to command line and we'll do docker ps and see now we've got two containers out there and see there's the port that it's showing that it's using that doesn't show up when you're in portainer. So now what we will do is sudo space ls space var lib docker containers. And if you've, I've done a video on this just kind of generic standpoint, but I'm putting this in there on anything new that I do just to have all the troubleshooting steps and verification when you get into it. So you, we've got two different IDs out there now, and we'll look up here. So we've got this one, so we're going to match it against that one. There is the other one, but that doesn't, that is for Portainer. So what we're going to do is we'll just recall this, add a forward slash to it, 
and we'll come up here and copy the whole name and let's see if it's going to paste it out okay it did good okay now it's showing us everything that's in that directory and you've got to use sudo because this is a restricted directory so if you go in with just the user pi it's not going to let you see it so now what we'll do is now that we know the name of the, it's json.log file that we're going to look at so let's change go over here and change ls to cat and i hit the end key and we'll do backslash and i'm sure you could do like an asterisk dash json.log but i have a tendency to stick with what works so we will go over here and hit enter and there you see what it is showing us the same thing that it is on portainer so that's good there green so if you ever have any reason to to believe that portainer may not be just giving you all the information or if portainer maybe is something looks corrupted you can flip over here to the command line and do that now i told you i was going to tell you a few things i ran up against what i found and on the particular system i ran it on it was pihole was on there and the uh, ubiquity management uh, appliance or uh, container was on there both of them i found the username that i got into it with was reset it's like it it thought i had never been into it before so i did have to redo that on both i was able to get in the configuration i hadn't done that much with pihole oh, i'm sorry pihole also i had to redo the dns information so that is a potential downside to using watchtower as opposed to manually updating so that's a good reason if you look at one of my other videos where we talk about doing backups of your sd cards that would be a good thing to have so that if something does happen you could fall back to that or at least look at log files the other thing is anytime you change something in a docker container primarily with the configuration is that you have it written down somewhere and i'm already looking at another docker container here in the next few weeks that i'm going to be deploying that will help you keep some of this documentation in a handy place so that's really kind of what we're doing this is going to be one of the the shorter videos so this is the the main thing i want you to also take away from this one is we went down into settings and we turned on external templates and it, we put this whole string in here and it actually points out to uh, to somebody set up on github and then it gives you a whole host of things to install and it some of these things you know i might not have thought of any other way so this is really going to be i think an interesting excursion if you find something that works really good let me know and i'll be happy to do a video on it if you've still got any questions and i'm going to be working on these in the uh, in the coming weeks so that's all we've got for now so this is you know a, a good way to back up your docker not so not back up the docker host but you know install new containers as they come out we just with the proviso that you may lose some of the configuration now the unify ubiquity management container all the configuration was still there so it was just the user credentials that i lost but everything else was there but on the other hand pihole i had to redo several things so it, it's going to be kind of hit or miss so a bottom line is be aware of the different configuration items and have those written down somewhere if you're changing them write down what you changed it to to make it a little bit easier if you do have to recreate things now, if you're watching this on YouTube, and you probably are, you're going to see videos on the screen to the right or to the left that are the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications, and we'll see you next time. Take care.